So a fun kind of, I guess, dexterity type game that we played was Junk Art. This was fun. It looked really colorful, the wooden pieces, even the box of the game was really nice. Um, I'm really terrible at these games and I proved it uh, on International Tabletop Day <laughs> because I managed to knock my structure over while attempting to place the piece on top. So you're probably wondering why would I do that? <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about the game. So in the game, everybody starts off with a square black kind of box looking thing. That's where you're going to start your structure and everybody gets four cards. So the first player will actually take two of his cards and pass them to the player, I believe it's on the left. So you have to choose between two cards. One of the pieces you're going to get, one of the pieces they're going to get. So obviously you want to take a piece that's enticing to them if you are looking for a specific piece so you can kind of throw yours in there and hope they don't pick it. So once you do that, then you both simultaneously take that piece from the junk pile and place it on your little square. And it has to be balanced. So you got to use your hands, put it on, leave it. So it goes around that. Everyone does the same thing. You, you draw back up once you've uh, done taken the two cards and disposed of them. These can get quite high and really difficult to stay uh, stable. Uh, you want to get colors that are the same touching because it gives you more points. So if you have multiple colors touching, you're going to get multiple points. Now here's the kicker. If you end up knocking over anybody else's piece, you lose points. I mean, you knock over your own, it's pretty much game over and you lose points. There's also scoring at the end where they measure who's the tallest and they get points. So overall, I thought this game was really fun. I might be missing a few little details because I don't know, I knocked mine out early so I didn't get to play a full, full game, but it was good what I had so far. So definitely a fun game. I know a lot of people are not really into dexterity type games or even abstract games, but I actually really liked it and I liked the art. I liked the concept of the game and I think a lot of people would enjoy it, even like young kids. I don't know, it kind of reminded me a little bit of Jenga, but more colorful. And I like the detail where you could actually make somebody else choose a, choose a shape that might not work with theirs. Get some very interesting looking junk art pieces. So definitely a win for me. Merchants and Marauders Broadsides. This is a two player game where each player plays the role of a captain of a ship and the entire object is to sink your opponent. This is done through a series of different decks of cards. Uh, there's an aiming deck. Uh, every time you aim, you either have to use one aim card or two, depending on how difficult the shot is. Uh, and you then have a deck of what looks like normal playing cards, but they have values between one and 10. And you use those one to tens in conjunction to with the aim cards to aim your cannons, and then you fire three different kinds of cannonballs. One specializes in shooting at sails, one shoots at the planks, and one shoots at the crew. And you have crew that man the ship, and if you lose enough, you start getting minuses on what you're trying to do. It, it was a really kind of interesting game. Now, full disclosure, I'm not a huge two-player game person. Um, but this one was pretty good. It was seemed to be pretty heavily luck dependent in the one run through that I had. But uh, if you didn't get the right aim cards, for instance, it just you were shooting blanks, so to speak. <clears throat> but it was uh, there was enough going on. There was enough strategy and, and variation to sort of keep you busy and, and intent. And the battles really swung wildly. At, at first, uh, I was losing very badly, and then it looked like I made a bit of a comeback, and then I was in the brink of death, and then I actually won the game. So it was an interesting back and forth, and it seems to to build to a crescendo. The game starts fairly slowly, with both players having a reasonable amount of ability to negate damage. Um, when the other player shoots them but after a while you can only evade so much and once you sort of run out of those evades or some of these other mitigation techniques then it just seemed like the hits came fast and furious and then boom 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 the game was over so it was very interesting if you like two player games and especially if you like pirate games then this one might be right up your alley so another game that we played that was really fun and really quick was beyond baker street so I was surprised it only took about 15 minutes. I think it plays about, we played with four people. I think that's the max. Um, so anybody who knows Beyond Baker Street, um, as our videographer, Paul, as soon as I said that, he's like, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> so there you go, yes, it was a Sherlock Holmes based game. So we were playing, uh, I believe it's like detectives. And it actually was kind of like Hannaby. 
So your cards that you have in your hand, you don't see. They're facing the other players. So they can actually give you clues. Um, some people's characters will actually say that they can't give a clue about the color or they can't give a clue about the number of the card. So those people, it's a bit harder to work with, but I had a character where I could easily just, I could actually give clue to two people. So I can say, okay, you have a card, this card on your left is a one, and then I could go to the other person and say, this card in the middle for you is blue. Because we have a board that's split up into different sections of the city. And basically these cards are flipped and we're trying to get uh, the amount of number, the number that's on the card and the color and kind of close that case file. So it's a little confusing without seeing the board, but um, there are three sections of the city that we're trying to do that. Meanwhile, we have Sherlock moving on the track. So every time we are missing the number, not getting the right number, we're going closer and closer to zero, which is not what we want. And then we have the other track, which is trying to, we want to grab that right up to 20. And that's a whole other pile of cards that we need to get into. I think they're called the inspection cards. I might be wrong about that one. So there were so many games going on. I might've forgotten a few of the details. But the point being is that we're playing a game where we have a certain amount of cards. We're trying to reach the exact numbers of the cards that are on the board without Sherlock reaching to zero before we're able to accomplish that. So it's great because you get to work, you know, as a team. So another co-op, um, Sherlock home theme, who doesn't love that? And if you like Hanabi, then definitely you will really enjoy this game. I enjoyed this game. Quick, something I'm gonna play at lunchtime with the gang. Beyond Baker Street, as the title suggests, is a Sherlock Holmes themed deductive reasoning card game. In it, players get a handful of cards and the only person that cannot see your hand is you. The other players have to describe to you what is in your hand and you have to play those cards appropriately to help solve a case. In this game, you're actually racing against Sherlock Holmes. So if he solves the case before you do, you lose the game. This game is actually quite beautiful. The art's really nice. Uh, obviously the theme ties into it perfectly. Um, it's fun, it plays very quickly, uh, and if you get the right group of people, it's, it's a really great one to get to the table. So I will almost certainly be picking this up when it comes out later. There were a few other games that were available to play, however, you know, there's only so much time in the day, so I didn't, unfortunately did not get to play all of them. Thunder and Lightning was one, which we actually got in our goodie bag. Yes, there was an awesome goodie bag. I will post, show a few pictures of those, what we got, amazing. I can't wait to play some of those games. Uh, so Thunder and Lightning is a newer one. I believe it was came out in about 2000, I think it's this year. And I believe it's available for purchase. It's a two player game. I know uh, someone had mentioned to me that it had to be, it was based on Zeus and Hera, um, that there was a game, I think of similar name and origin. Not 100% sure, so I haven't played this one yet, but definitely will be posting a review once I have, because I have been getting a lot of inquiries about it, so hopefully within the next week we'll have something up. Two player games, love them, play them often. There was also uh, the Flick em Up, there was an expansion, so Flick a Red Rock. I didn't get to play this again. I'm not big on some of those games, because um, I'm afraid I'll flick a piece and hit somebody in the eye and, you know, I'll get sued. And, it's just too much for me. <laughs> so that's a game that I probably won't play, but it's enjoyable to watch others play. So yes, that was available as well. I don't think it's out yet, but it was there for us to see. So everyone can keep their eye on that one. I think that's it. I have a list. So let us consult. No, I got them all. Yay. So that summed up our day at Z-Man headquarters. A huge thank you to FTZ for having us. It was amazing. And I really hope that we'll get to go again next year. Amazing time, met some amazing people. Um, you'll probably see a few of them on some collaborations and some upcoming videos. Um, so that's it. We just wanted to try something a little different, let you know how our visit went and let you guys see what we saw for the day. It's super awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. And like I said before, subscribe. Let us know if we're missing something, you wanna see something, tell us. We're open to hearing about it. So until next time, bye.